Hello everyone and welcome to another tutorial. So I've been working really hard to put this tutorial together for you. And what it is, is this adorable little animation. So I'm gonna be covering everything. I won't be skipping anything. So this is from um, the beginning of an empty scene all the way to a final render. It's gonna be this guy here. I will be making the scene file available to my Patreons. Information about that is in the description below. And if you don't wanna do that, a really great way to support the channel, guys, is if you subscribe, you check me out also on Instagram and follow me there. Uh, just, it really, it means a lot to me when you guys are enthusiastic and you follow my work and stuff. I really do appreciate my subscribers. And um, so without wasting any more time, let's get into this. I hope you guys really enjoy this. Okay, so go ahead and open up Blender and then delete everything in the scene. So what we're gonna do is go Shift A, we're gonna go to our mesh options here, we're gonna add in a circle. We're gonna tab into edit mode and with this geometry selected, we're gonna go R, X, 9, 0. So we've now rotated it 90 degrees on the X axis. Then we're gonna go to our front orthographic view and with all of these vertices selected, we're gonna hit E and then S. And if you hold in control, and we're doing this scale and extrude, we can move this, um, the cursor around, or the, the mouse, and you'll see it's snapping to the grid. Okay, so just get a feel for it. So we're gonna snap one, two, three spaces in like that. And then we're gonna go to right orthographic view, hit A to select everything, and then X, Y, and we're gonna do the same thing, holding control, and as we're moving this along the Y, it's gonna snap to the grid, so we're gonna snap one, two, three times. Just like that, so now yours should be exactly like mine is. Tab out of edit mode, and what we're gonna do is give this guy a, a bevel modifier, and come over here to the limit method, make it angle, and what we're gonna do is come here to our offset and just decrease it. Now this is personal preference, so I'm gonna go with something like 0 0.01, because I don't want those bevels to be too intense, and I'm gonna set the segment count here to two. And then what I'm gonna do is apply that, because I no longer need it. Tab into edit mode quickly, and just select all of these vertices and go G, and go Y and just move it forward. So this, um, the origin point is gonna be in the center of our geometry here. So here we have this donut and we're going to go G, Z and just move it up. If you hold the control, it can snap to the grid. So we're just gonna move it up so it's sitting on the floor here in our world space. And we're gonna model in the eyes and the teeth. So tab into edit mode again. And what we're gonna do is go um, Shift A. We're gonna to go to mesh options, in edit mode, add in a plane and then go G, Z, bring this plane up here, and then go R, X, 9, 0, and hit enter. And scale this plane down like this. Go Control R to add in a loop cut, double click, and Control R, add in a loop cut, double click. Select all of these vertices here, and then go S to scale them up. And then what we're gonna do is select this vertice down here, and go G, Z, and bring it down. Then we're gonna go Control L with that vertice selected, so it's gonna select all of this geometry. Then we're gonna go E, Y, and extrude it along the Y, like that. And then we're gonna go Control R to add in a loop cut here. Double click, select this vertice in the middle at the top, and go X, and delete that vertice. Now, if we grab this guy and go Control L again with one of these vertices, we can go ahead and move this guy up here. So go into wireframe, scale this down, and we're just gonna make some really basic, simple teeth like this. And I'm gonna go Shift D and move this guy over. And I'm not using the mirror modifier because I want it to be a little bit random on both sides because nobody has perfect teeth on both the mirrors perfectly. So just duplicating this guy, moving it over here. Then Shift D, bring another little dude over here. And I'm gonna scale this one down just slightly and move it over here. And then go Shift D, move it over here and R just to rotate it. And we're just placing in teeth. Now you can make this as random or stylized as you want. I'm just gonna go with some four really basic stylized teeth like this. And just make sure you select all of them as well. And just go G, Y, and just move them forward so they're sitting a little bit more in the middle of our character here. And then all we have to do is go Shift, D, Z, and bring them down. And then we can go R, 180, and hit Enter. And that's in our front orthographic view. And then go into wireframe and move these guys up a little bit. And you can get rid of you can take these two down here, go control L, X and delete, and do the same thing with this one here. So we just have two teeth at the bottom here. So this is, like I said, totally up to you how you wanna approach this, but this is just a design that I like. And um, yeah, back in edit mode, let's just add in the two eyes quickly. So shift A, go to um, options here and just add in a UV sphere. And then we can probably leave it at the, um, the 
let's just have a look here. So the segments are set to 42. If you want to set that down, you can, but I'm just going to leave it at 32 because I'm not, it's not going to be that much. So just scale it down, G, Z, bring it up. And you can make these eyes as big as you want, but I'm just bringing one over here. G, Y, bring it forward a bit. And I, what I like to do with this sort of character is make one eye a little bit bigger than the other one. So I'm going to go Shift D, move one over here, and just scale it up a little bit bigger. Uh, that just gives it a bit of a stylized feel. It's something I like, so I'm going to go with it. And here it is. So let's go to our, ob our modifiers. We're going to add in a subdivision surface modifier. Go to Object and enable Shade Smooth. And now what we're going to do is go Shift A. We're going to go to our Mesh Options. We're going to add in a UV Sphere. And what we're going to do with this guy is go G, Z, bring it up to the middle of our character here and go S to scale it down. And we want to make sure that we can place this guy in the middle here so it's not touching any of these teeth or any of the geometry. And we're going to go to Object, Enable Shade Smooth, and come here to Add a Modifier and add a Subdivision Surface Modifier. And then let's add in a Plane. So I'm going to go um, Shift A, add in a Mesh Plane, and just S to scale it up a little bit. Come over here, and this is... Uh, um, something you just have to kind of get a feel for but if you come if you're in your front view like this and you kind of just move over up here like this roughly at a 45 degree and you go um, shift a and you go down and you add a camera then hit zero that's gonna take you to your camera view your camera is selected hit G and then your middle mouse wheel and just pull back on your mouse and then you can just like usual hit G and just move around in here and kind of pose your camera you can also hit R to rotate and then G to move so just get a view like this. Um, and then what we're going to do is come here to the camera settings. I like to make the type orthographic. And then we're going to come here to our camera output settings. And I'm going to make the Y value here on the resolution 1920 as well. So that's going to give us a square aspect ratio. This is also something I find works quite well for Instagram. And if you're going to be doing it like a portfolio, I just really like it for motion graphics. So then come back down here to the camera settings. And if you mess around with this orthographic scale, you can zoom in and out. Um, you won't be able to use G and middle mouse wheel when you're in orthographic, so you have to use this orthographic scale because there is no perspective. So I'm going to go with something like this. And it's just a matter of rotating your camera and moving it into a position. So I would recommend you guys try as hard as you can just to match up with the kind of um, view I have over here. But something like this should be fine. Then we're going to grab the sphere over here and come over here to our timeline. And first of all, just go to our end frames here. And we don't need 250 frames, that's too much. We're going to type in 70. So that's going to give us 70 frames to work with. And with this sphere selected, go to frame 1 over here. Make sure on frame 1. And then we're going to go G and go Y. And we're going to move this guy out of our camera view here. So this is very important. We don't want to see it in a camera view. And we're going to go I and we're going to insert a location key. Then we're going to come over to frame 60. Oh, sorry, frame um, 50, I think. So come to frame 50 and go G, Y, move this guy over here out of the camera view and go I and insert a location key. So we should see this. And if you select both of these um, keyframes here and you hit T, you can make the interpolation method linear. So that's just going to make it a linear um, animation. Okay, that's really good. So now we can grab this guy here and just add in some basic shape keys. So let's come here to our object data properties, go to the shape keys, hit the plus. That's going to add in a basis and then hit it once more. This is going to be our first shape key. So drag this value to one and let's just call this um, mouth closing. Okay. And let's tab into edit mode with that shape key selected. And what we're going to do is go to our face select here. And if you go shift alt and you click here and you loop select this loop, and you hit control plus twice. So you just say you select all of these vertices in the middle, these faces. And then what we're gonna do is go S, Shift, and Y. And what that's gonna do is scale this geometry, but it's gonna exclude the Y scaling. So it's only gonna scale along the Z and the X. And we're gonna make it just like this. Make it a small little mouth. And then what we can do is grab these teeth over here. Just select them. Go Control L to like to select all of them. Go G Z, bring them down and scale them down a little bit. And just go G and just move them up like that. Just so they're sticking out a little bit. And then grab these two down here. Control L, just move them up, scale them down a bit, and just have them also just barely sticking out. So this is what we're going to see. So if we come here and we mess around with this scale, we take it down to zero. It you can see we don't have the effect. If we take a value up to one, we have that um, closing mouth closing. Um, shape key over there. So let's just put this to zero, add in another shape key, 
and let's name this guy Blink. And I like adding blinks to my character, so it just adds a life to them. And then we're going to increase this value to 1, tap into edit mode, and now just select both of these um, spheres here. So that's you only want them selected, nothing else. And then you're going to go S, Y, and scale them flat along the Y, and then S, Z, and scale them down. And this is going to create like a blink. So now if we come out of back into object mode and we mess around with the slider, bring it down to zero, the eyes are open, do this, they blink. So that's just going to add some really cool character to our character, and that's why it's called a character. So let's do some basic animations. So what I want to do, and this might be a little bit different for you depending on how you set up your camera and your scaling and stuff, but we want to come and just drag through our frames here. And we want to come to a point, let's say about frame 19, just so this guy is almost over here. And what we're going to do is we're going to come here to the mouth closing. We're going to drag this value up to 1. And hovering over this value of 1, we're going to hit I. And that's going to insert a keyframe. And then what we're going to do is drag it till this sphere is in the middle of our character here, roughly. And then we're going to drag this value down to 0. And hovering over it, we're going to hit I. So we're going to see this. Open the mouth. And what we want to do is have a bit of a hold. So we're going to grab this frame here, this um, second, this first frame we created, and go Shift D, just drag it over to about frame 36. So however long this hold is, that's how long the mouth is going to stay open for. And then let's come about here, frame 45. And then I'm going to drag this value, mouth closing, back down, up to 1, and hit I, hovering over that. So we're going to see this. Opens mouth and closes. So let's have a look at that in our camera view and closes. Awesome, that looks really cool. So let's just add those quick little blinks, very easy to do. So come to frame 10, and in frame 10 we're going to come to the blink, and with a value of 0 here, we're going to hit I, hovering over it, then move up two frames by hitting our right arrow key two times, then create this value all the way up to 1, so take it up to 1, hit I, hovering over it, then move up two frames, and bring this guy down, and hit I, so with a value of 0. So we're going to see this blink here. And what we can do is select these three keyframes, just um, drag and select them and go Shift D and move them wherever you want a secondary blink. So I'm going to do it in frame 60 here. And let's have a look at that. And then we get another blink. And if you grab this end keyframe here and you move it out a little bit, the blink is going to last a little bit longer. So not, they're not exactly both the, um, they're not exactly the same. It just gives it a little bit of random variation. So here we have an animation. And one thing you want to keep in mind, if you want to make this loopable, you might want to move this sphere out a little bit further because if you have a reflective surface here, it might cast a shadow on here and it's going to, it's not going to look 100% loopable when you're doing it, but I'm not going to worry too much about this. Um, so I'm just going to leave it at this. So this is our animation and we can now get into adding our lighting and our materials. Okay, so first of all, let's come here to our render settings. We're going to make sure the render engine is set to EV and we're going to come down here, enable ambient occlusion and also and also enable screen space reflection. Those two are very important if you want this to look good. And then what we're going to do is go Shift A. We're going to add in a light. We're going to be adding in an area light. Then we're going to go G, Z, move this guy up here. And we're going to come here to the cameras, the light settings. And let's make the size 4 meters. And we're going to increase the, the, powers here, the power here to 350 watts. I think the W, the w there stands for watts. So the strength like that. And then what we're going to do is come to our top view and go G and move this guy over here. And then what we want to do is come here and just rotate it like this. So this is where our light source is going to be coming from. And then we're going to go Shift D, move another one back here, and then just rotate it like this. So just these two lights here for now. So let's have a look at that in our camera view. Okay, so that's looking really nice. I really like that sort of lighting. It just looks really awesome to me. And that's about it with our lighting. So let's get into our materials. So materials are pretty basic and nothing to worry about. So go to your shading over here. Go into your camera view here. Make sure you're in a rendered view. And then select the character. That's going to be the first one we start with. Hit the little materials. Uh, open up the material tab here. Go new. Let's call this first one skin. So this is going to be the overall color of the material of our character here. And with this one, what we're going to do is come here to our principal BSDF. And we're going to come to the base color. And we're going to make it this kind of color here. Now, I'm not going to give any sort of exact measurements, but this is roughly the hex value here if you guys want to have it exactly like mine. But I'm just going to eyeball it, and to me, this range here looks really good. And what I'm going to do is come here to the subsurface scatter, and I'm going to make it 0.1 and hit enter, and just leave it at that. Then I'm going to hit the plus 
button here, go new, create a new material. I'm going to call this um, just uh, outer, because it's just going to be this outer little color that's on the outside of a character. And in edit mode, go to the face select, and then go shift alt and loop select these, this edge loop here. Go control plus just once, and then assign that um, outer material. And then over here in your principal shader, we're going to make this kind of just like a reddish kind of color, like that. So you guys can see what I just did there. And we're not going to be messing around with any of this roughness or anything. Just leave it as it is. And then back in edit mode, select these two here, the two eyes. Go control L just to select all of this geometry. Hit the plus and then go new and assign. I'm just going to call this eyes. And all the eyes are is a black material, solid black. And we're going to bring this roughness down quite a bit. Like that. And then just grab the teeth here. And the teeth are really easy because all we have to do is go select all of them. Hit the little plus here, go new, assign, call it teeth, and that's it. Because we don't have to mess around because just the default principal shader as it is will work for the teeth. And now we can add a color to our floor here. So grab the floor, go new, and I'm just going to click on this base color here, select the little eyedropper and select the character here. And that's going to give it just roughly the same kind of color range as the character. And I like that, it just, it just, it just looks good to me, so I'm going to go with that. And you can mess around with this value here if you want it to be lighter or darker, but I'm gonna go with something just like this, like kind of like a clay kind of color, it looks really cool to me. And then what we need to do is just grab that sphere back there, go new, and um, I'd like to make this like a nice orange. Like this kind of, not too saturated, but also not too undersaturated. And just come down here and make the roughness a little bit less. Just give it that kind of plasticky look. And that's it, so go back to our layout now. And if we come over here, we can see what this all looks like. It's looking really good. But one more thing that's really going to make this look awesome is if you grab your camera and you go to your camera settings and enable depth of field, then go Shift A. We're going to add in an empty, add in a cube, go G, Z, move this cube up, and just place it roughly just a little bit to the front of your character up here. And then come to your camera settings, open up the depth of field tab, click on this little eyedropper and select this cube over here. And then we're going to come here to the f-stop value and just decrease it till we start to get a nice kind of shallow depth of field that we like. So maybe for me that's going to be something like 0.3. And that's just looking really cool. So if we were to play this right now, this is what you see. So I'm going to quickly show you how we render this out as a final animation. So go here to your render settings, output settings, go down to the output, click on this folder. I like to select my desktop or you can select any folder you want. So that's where the video is going to get saved out to. Go to your file format and make it FFmpeg, go down to your encoding, and make the container um, mp4peg. And that's about all you have to do. And what I like to do, because I don't want it to be 100% um, this value here, so just to render a little bit faster, I'm gonna make mine 80%, and that still looks fine. And then all you have to do is go over here to render, and render animation, and it's gonna render this out as a final animation to your desktop. And it's gonna be something really cool you can add to your portfolio. Now, I would challenge you guys to make this as unique as you can. As you can. Like, you could definitely copy this exactly like I did, put it on Instagram, but it wouldn't really be your work. So what I challenge you guys to do is like really try and use the technique, but make something that's your that's your own flavor, something that, that you've kind of made unique. Like try a different color palette, try a different camera position, do a little bit more um, something fancy with the animation. So you can kind of develop your own kind of animation technique and stuff. Uh, so I really encourage you guys to do that, not just copy everything but just learn something from it as well. So I hope you guys enjoyed this and um, yeah, make something cool. I'll see you guys later for another tutorial. And like I said before, these scene files are gonna be available on my Patreon. So go ahead, check that out. That is in the link below. There's a lot of really cool stuff on there and it's pretty affordable.